Hi guys, if you enjoy watching a video on how to paint, whether it's for relaxation or for learning, you've come to the right channel. My name is Jenny B, and that's Jenny with an I. Today I'll be painting that leopard, and I'm doing that in soft pastel on pastel matte paper. It's taken me a little while to come back and video for you. I had a malfunction with my camera and had to send it in for servicing. And then of course, unfortunately, in my neck of the woods, we had a huge flood. So it's taken a little while to get back up and running. But here I am. And much thanks to all my supporters and those who have subscribed to the channel. It means the absolute world to me that you've done that and I look forward to producing more videos with your support. Now here I'm just softening down the background which I've laid in using a combination of um, Art Spectrum, Unison and Rembrandt pastels. And I used a soft tool, that's S-O-F-F-T, to lay that in. I'm then going to put in some light markers. This will help me judge my tones and it also keeps it nice and neat for this particular painting on that particular side of the face. As I lay in the pastels, I follow the bone structure of the animal and I follow the fur line. So they're two just slightly different things, but they come together. This, this painting will have actually quite a painterly effect to it rather than a very, very, very fine detailed. But I think you can see in the end result that we don't have to put every hair on the fur. Now that I have some light, some dark and some mid-tone, I can make adjustments as I see necessary. Now the strokes I'm putting in here, or the marks as um, we like to say in pastel, are actually quite short marks. Depending on the species, it's often shorter hair, especially for leopards um, and certain breeds of dogs, horses, etc. The fur around the face does tend to be a bit shorter. And we need, well, I need to refle reflect that when I'm painting. So just popping it, popping them in. Now the light tends to just stand at the end of each strand of hair. I like to call these marks a staccato mark. They're just short, light marks. Don't you just love the richness and vibrancy of pastel? Now for those who have never worked in pastel before, pastel is one of the earliest mediums that we've ever had. Um, and it's been recorded that a lot of the um, Renaissance painters would all train on pastel before they started to learn to paint in oils. Pastel is in fact the same pigmentation that we use in oil paints. It just has a different binder. What I love is, is the immediacy of pastels. You know, you're not waiting between layers to dry. There's no tiresome clean up afterwards. You can just pop it all in the way you go. There's also quite a, a richness to the color. And you know, you've got to love that because of the effect that it gives. So already within just a couple of minutes, we can see the light coming through. Just 
just balancing out some of those darks. I hope you're all doing really well today. If you ever want to catch up and see what Bella and I are doing, I do have an Instagram account, which is Jenny B Studios, as well as Facebook. I can't say I'm the best with social media, but I am there. And of course I have my website www.jennybstudios I'm adding in a shadow colour here I mean where there's light there's got to be dark right? So really what I'm doing is just following those darks and lights. This, guys, if there's anything you want to see me paint, then please let me know. I think here you can see a great difference between the side of the face as we come up to the crown. So you can see that shadows and the, the mid-tones and I'm just working them in as I go. Again with just those short strokes. Now this is only the first layer. I will be working in more layers as I go. Pastel has a range of products, so it has the sticks that you can see me using here. It also has some pencils, which you'll see me working on later. Um, and then, of course, we have um, pan pastels as well. Each of them have their own uses. I wanted to show you a close-up shot of all the strokes that go in. Now here I am using one of those pastel pencils, so it's the same pastel as the stick but obviously refined to be in a pencil form and I'm using what we call in Australia a paper stump. This is just to help work the pastel into the paper and being a tiny area, this is only what we call an A4 format. So it's not a big painting. I could have of course done a larger painting but yeah, I think just for demonstration purposes, this is quite a nice size to show you. There's a range of colours that go into the eye and as we move up under that eyelid, there's going to be a shadow. Obviously there's a lot of light um, and reflective light that's here and I pop those details in as well. As you can see here. And those little highlights which are not white at this stage um, actually give the eye that moisture look. What I love about the expression of this, this particular leopard is that she looks like she's curious but ready to react if necessary. You know, she doesn't look mean and ferocious. Well, not to me anyway.
you can see here on the shoulder um, because of the head turn we've got quite a lot of um, movement in the fur there and I'm putting in just the dark mid-tones and some subtle lights You know, this all came about because as an artist I asked that that one question, what if? So I do do a lot of pet portraits and I absolutely love animals. And, you know, I asked myself, what if? What if I did something different and I did a leopard? So those who know me know I paint in a range of mediums, so soft pastel, acrylic and on occasion watercolour. It all sort of looks a bit messy here um, and I think on my other videos I've of, I often say you work towards the messy stage of a painting and then you start to refine it which is what you're seeing me do here. So I haven't used a lot of pastel pencil yet. Um, there will be a stage that I'll be adding pastel pencil but the bulk of this painting is all done in stick pastels which is loads of fun. The great thing about your sticks is that, you know, you can get such a variety of marks from them. You can use them on the corners, you can use them as a whole. I think every animal has their own unique personality and that's something I always aim to show when I'm painting them. I've got Bella in the background grumbling. And for those of you who don't know, Bella is my little Maltese Shih Tzu. Uh, she comes with me everywhere, so even when I'm uh, doing classes, Bella comes along. She just loves it. Meeting all those new people, getting loads of cuddles. I'm telling you, if you're an animal, I'm the best place to be. Here I'm putting in a lot of light. Now obviously this is a professional photo and a lot of time in professional photos we don't get the same sort of lighting that we like as artists. So in this we get um, quite a lot of reflected light there on the left and the main source of light is actually coming through on the right and that's what I'm attempting to depict here. Again I'm just laying it down on the tips of the um, the top of the the marks that I previously put in because that's how light works. 
with an understanding of, of how light moves, it aids you in making a more realistic portrayal. I don't just paint animals either by the way guys I also do you know landscapes seascapes some florals so if you're ever stuck for a gift then you know check out my website uh, the same if you're interested in a, a pet portrait you know please feel free to contact me my details are all in the description box below Now here I'm just adding a little bit more colour. Um, it's interesting because I did have a student that has sort of said, oh well with pastels you can't mix colour. So I showed them how to mix colour. And I actually wanted uh, a colour that I didn't have. You know, you don't have to buy every, every colour in the the range it's handy but yeah you can also mix colors with pastel as well um, in this particular case I've actually used the the pastel stick just to add a bit of different color if it was a wet medium you would probably call it glazing um, it does does sort of have that effect If you're wondering what I was doing there, I was using a what I, is called a fofa. Um, I had one for my camera gear, and it just helps to blow any of that excess pastel away. With my pastel sticks, I do use a, a range of Carbothello uh, and Derwent pastels, and that's just in those pencils. Now you can see by using that additional uh, warmth into the highlights how much more of a glow I'm getting on the effect of the fur And here we're coming up to the final stages, just putting the highlight and the fine detail 
of those whiskers. Guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, please like, subscribe, share. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye for now. Let's go painting.